There are several stories in the Bible where we find that God specifically chose to work through an inadequate amount of resources in order to accomplish his purpose. You probably know the story of Gideon and his 300 men. They were no match for their enemy. Perhaps you know the story of the woman with the cruise of oil that didn't run out and the little barrel of meal that didn't run out. The resources were inadequate. And perhaps you can think of some other examples. Today's miracle that we're going to be talking about is much like those two stories that I just mentioned to you. The title of this lesson is, What are they among so many? It's a question that was asked by Andrew. This is the story of the feeding of the 5,000. It's found in all four Gospels. And I want to read this story to you from John's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. Jesus and his disciples were actually trying to go on vacation. They were trying to get away from the hustle and bustle of ministry for a brief period of time. But the people followed him. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. It was almost time for Passover. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said to Philip, Where will we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, to prove Philip. For he himself knew what he would do. Jesus knew that he was going to feed the 5,000 miraculously. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. In other words, Philip was saying, this can't be done. Even if we had a whole bunch of bread, uh, we wouldn't be able to feed all of these people, even if they just took a little bit. One of Jesus' disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? That's the question, the title of the lesson. Andrew says, What good is this? This is just a tiny little bit of food. What good is this? What help is this in this situation? And Jesus said, make the men sit down. Seems to me it would take a lot of faith to do this. The disciples had said, send them away. Jesus said, no, have them sit down. Now there was much grass in this place. So the men sat down in number about about 5,000 plus women and children, about 5,000 men. And Jesus took the loaves And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise, the fish, as much as they would. Everybody got got to eat just as much as they wanted until they were full. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, I presume he means uh, the 5,000 men. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, this is of a truth, that prophet. You have to look into Moses' writings, Deuteronomy chapter 18, to figure out that They were saying, we we believe this is the Messiah. This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. They're associating Jesus' multiplication of the bread with Moses' power to give manna to their forefathers. Of course, it wasn't Moses that gave them the manna, it was God. Uh, But anyway, they associated Jesus with the foreseen prophet that Moses had told them about had said would come. And they were right, actually. He was and is that prophet. Three observations from this particular miracle today. First, I want you to notice the compassion of Christ. There was an emotional impact 
that the intruding crowd had on the heart of the Savior. We read in one of the other stories that he, he was moved with compassion as he looked at them. They were, they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he cared for their situation. By the way, the disciples cared too. But their solution was far less taxing on them than Jesus' solution. They said, the people are going to be hungry. Let's send them away. Jesus said, no, have them sit down. And Jesus entered into their dilemma with them. And he intervened mercifully. He intervened and helped them out with their problem. He intervened mercifully. So Jesus had compassion. We have the compassion of Christ that we see here. He cared about their situation. Even though it was just a temporary situation, they were hungry. Then secondly, we see the command that Christ gave to his disciples. Jesus had the power and the solution, but he assigned the task of distribu distribution to his disciples. He cared about the people, but he commanded his disciples to deliver the food to them. And then thirdly, we see the coming to Christ. In other words, we see the crowd coming to Christ, then we, did the, then we see the disciples coming to Christ. They had to all come to Christ in order to get what the crowd needed. They couldn't deliver food to the crowd until they first came to Jesus. Then apparently the leftovers were collected and presumably brought to Christ at the end and they counted up there were 12 baskets of leftovers. What are they among so many? I want you to take this lesson and apply it to your own life. Each one of these three points. Do you have the compassion that Christ has for the people around you? Can we turn up the volume of our compassion so that we care more sincerely, more deeply, more effectively for the people around us who are suffering? Whether their suffering is great or, or whether it's simple and minor and relatively not that big a deal. Do we have the compassion that Christ had for those around us? Are we obeying the command of Christ? Surely God has given you something, some resource, something that you can distribute to others. If nothing else, he's given us the gospel. He did the work, just, in the, just like in this case. He had the power to multiply the bread and fish. He did the work on the cross to provide salvation, but he has commanded us to distribute the good news to those who need it. And then the third aspect of this miracle that applies to our life is, are you coming to Christ? I'm not talking about for salvation. I'm talking about those of us who are already disciples. Are we coming to Christ to get the spiritual sustenance and the resources that we need in order to go and help? others. The disciples were absolutely dependent upon Christ for them to minister effectively to the people that they were ministering to that day. Are you coming to Christ? How often are you coming? Are you staying? Are you listening? Are you taking all that he has to give so that you can minister to others? You might say of yourself, man, I'm not much. I can't do much. I don't matter much. You might say, I'm kind of like the five loaves and two fish. Who am I? When I consider the problems of the people around, people around me and the, the difficulties that they're facing and the hardness of their lives, who am I? What can I do? Jesus can feed 5,000, 10,000, 15, 20,000 people with one little boy's lunch. He's not limited to save by many. He can save even with just a few. He can take a little and do much with it. There's a song that you may have heard before, little is much when God is in it.